Hey, what's going on guys? This is my uh, current Infernoble Knight deck that I'm playing. Uh, I've been playing this in the new season with the new ban list. And, uh, you know, it got me from basically 100 rating to 500 rating with a 60% success rate. And I'm going to go ahead and show you what I'm currently playing with. Uh, if you just were interested in the deck list, I'm going to put it down in the description. Uh, if you want to find out the reasons why I'm playing certain cards and why I'm playing, um, why I'm not playing other cards, uh, go ahead and stick around. I'm also going to explain what each card does. Uh, so anyone who wants to learn to play this deck has a basic idea of how the deck functions. Uh, the deck I'm playing does not play Cold Wing or Despot. It's very similar. I mean, it's it's basically the deck I showed in my uh, my combo video on this channel. So if you want to check it out, uh, it's a video I posted about a week ago. So let's go ahead and get into the deck profile. So first, we start off with, uh, in my opinion, the best normal summon in the deck, which is going to be uh, three copies of uh, Ogier. Uh, if you don't know what Ogier does, essentially he just um, Using an Armageddon Knife for uh, Fire Warriors or equip spells that are uh, Noble Arms. So on Normal Summon, you can send a Fire Warrior to the Graveyard or a Noble Arms, uh, which lets you have access to uh, Gear Freed very early on before the fifth summon. Uh, and also, it's so different applications if you want to do a search uh, by sending by sending Durendal. So I played three of him. This is the card I want to see in my opening hand. This is one of my Normal Summons. Uh, I only play six normal summon so this is uh, three normal this is one of them right here three normal summons uh the next card is going to be three copies of renard renard is a uh, pretty good card it's an extender it's an inherent summon uh you can just special summon as long as you have a fire warrior on the field and then you can add back a fire warrior or a equip spell that's in the graveyard or banished uh so you can see the synergy between ogier and uh, renard uh, this Ogier sends Gear Freed, and then uh, Renard special summons himself from your hand, then you can add back Gear Freed to your hand, and now you essentially search Gear Freed. Uh, next, you are playing... I am playing 2 uh, Oliver. Uh, this is my target for... Wow, I can't forget her name. For Zold, sorry about that. This is my target for Zold. Uh, I go ahead and uh, I send four equips and I summon him from the deck to the graveyard and to the field. And he's a tuner, so it gives you access to um, health plays and as well as going into Roland. Uh, he's also a pseudo extender. If you have the conditions meeting, you can special summon him from your hand to the field if you by sending a, a fire warrior from your hand or an equip spell. Uh, he also equips from Grave to any warrior monster and making them untargetable. And uh, Ogier equips from Grave as well, uh, making that, that monster that's equipped uh, indestructible. So if you have two of them equipped onto a monster, it literally becomes uh, undestructible and untargetable, which is pretty hard to get over. So I played two of him. The one of, uh, this is kind of a controversial one. People really don't like this one. This is uh, Astolfo. Uh, it's just again another suit extender. You can go ahead and summon it from your hand by banishing one fire warrior in your graveyard. And uh, he has this really like late effect where you can banish him from your graveyard. And on your second standby phase, he summons himself from the from the from the banish zone, as well as uh, um, fire warrior from your graveyard on your second standby phase, giving you two bodies on the field. Uh, it's really late. You can get this off in the beginning of the game, and if the game goes more than, you know, four turns or three turns, then you can pop off with the effect. Um, I play one of because uh, you can search it off the and it's, uh, it sometimes it lets you push for place if you get hand trapped. But uh, this is up to preference, in my opinion. Uh, next, you are playing uh, three Gear Free. This is probably the best card in the whole deck, in my opinion. It outs Dragoon, it outs so many problematic monsters, it's easy to summon, 3,000 attack. And this is your, this is what you want to summon before your fifth summon so you can negate Nibiru. Uh, in my opinion, uh, you should definitely play three of these. Um, I've gotten, I've been in games before where uh, my board has been completely broken and I, and I had nothing left in my extra deck. And I still won because I had access to multiple gear freeds. Uh, and then equipping them with uh, Ogier and Oliver, Makes it a really hard boss monster to get over. 
and it's just uh, it's just a beef beefy monster to have and easy to summon, and it's it's kind of searchable because you can send it off of Ogier. Next, my next special normal summon, uh, you're gonna go ahead and play three Neo Space Connector. Neo Space Connector is probably the best card right now to play. I know people play Sublimation Knight or Neo Space. Uh, I think Neo Space is just a better option right now, uh, just because it lets you summon, uh, you know, Dolphin uh, from your deck. It's a one card is old, and you get to see your opponent's hands. Uh, it just it does a lot, and you know, you can you know, it, it does a lot for the deck, sets you up for plays. Um, if you don't normal summon him, you can search him with uh, his old and then have a play for next turn. So this is my second normal summon. I only play two normal summons, which is going to be uh, Space Connector and Ogier. Uh, all the other ones can essentially summon themselves from the hand, but they can also be normal summon, but you don't want to do that. Uh, more extenders, uh, three Fire Friend Lady. Uh, super easy to summon. You can just, as long as you control Warrior Monster, you can activate this card from your hand and special summon it. It is an activated effect, so it's, it's uh, it can be chained to, it does start a chain, so just make sure you are aware of that. Um, if, you know, they can somehow negate that in your hand, sometimes you might, you know, be out of luck, so just make sure you are activated correctly, because it does start a chain. But it's, uh, it's a pretty good warrior uh, extender, you can search it with the equip spell, um, and uh, it's just, honestly, it's a very solid card, it's just a staple 3 up in my opinion, in the deck. Next, I play two red layers. Uh, these are just extenders. I don't actually use these for anything else. Uh, I just use them to, if I open them, I can go ahead and special summon this and then special summon another monster. Uh, and, you know, it's a good uh, typing, it's Fire Warrior, so it really synergizes with most of your other uh, cards. Uh, you can also send it off your hand for Oliver. That's multiple applications, but this is just a turn one extender. So you can uh, push for, uh, you know, summoning body so you can have multi you can have ways to get to uh, is old uh, now for the hand traps I only play two ash and two valor uh, this is kind of your flex spot you can change this to whatever you want if you have more extenders you can switch out for that if you're worried about back row you can add back row removal you can switch out the hand traps uh, the reasoning why I chose these two uh, they're not the strongest right now uh, you know I would have liked to play uh, gamma, but Gamma requires you to have a driver, and I feel like this deck already plays some bricks. I don't want to add another one to it. Imperm would be another good choice, uh, but if you go full combo, you won't have any space on your on your uh, spell and trap zone, so you can't set the the Imperm. So it just kind of stays in your hand, kind of dead, unfortunately. So the way I saw it is like if you drew the Valor or you drew the Ash and you went full combo, you still have these interruptions in your hand that you can have access to, and because Call by the Graves are one. They're much, much less likely for them to get negated. Uh, so this is why I'm playing these. Uh, again, you can change these out to whatever the, the format asks for. I know, I think Droll right now is pretty good. So you can actually switch out the Valor for Droll if you think that's better. And then uh, for the current bricks I'm playing, I am playing Plague Spread Zombie and Cyber Synchron. I'll go ahead and explain in the, when I get to the extra deck what I use these for. Uh, very simply, this is my half target and this is my uh, Axel Synchron target. Uh, if you drew both of these, you can still combo off. I can sh uh, show you in my video. You can just check it out in my um, the last week I posted on this channel. If you draw both of these and you still have access to his old and hopefully no interruptions, you can actually still combo off. So drawing these is not the worst thing in the world. Obviously, you don't want to draw these, but these are the two uh, bricks that I play. And now for the spells. Uh, should be pretty self-explanatory. Uh, one reinforcement the army. You're gonna go ahead and add any warrior monster, basically your whole deck. Uh, you're gonna also play three heritage of the chalice. This card is another Rhoda, basically. You can add any of your uh, your infernoble net uh, arm, infernoble monsters or infernoble arms. Uh, so this is just another Rhoda. So that's you already have access to four, and then on top of that, you have access to three more. So you play seven searchers basically. Uh, this lets you add any fire warrior uh, that's level of five or lower from your deck to your hand. Uh, it needs to be equipped because it is an equip spell. Uh, it doesn't need to be equipped to one of your monsters. You can equip it to one of your opponent's monsters. And then uh, it also has a second effect that uh, almost never really comes up. That if you, um, it says, uh, 
You see, if this card is sent to the graveyard because of the equipped monster is sent to the graveyard, you can target one level five or lower fire warrior in your graveyard and special summon it. Also, you cannot search summon monster for turn except warrior monsters. Uh, that never really comes up. Maybe in the late game, if you didn't have access to Charles, you can quick, you know, quickly summon something back and sync it to Charles, but uh, that second will never comes up. It's just really just a searcher. Uh, so you can see the deck is very consistent. It plays uh, seven searchers or seven rotas basically. So all of these cards search almost anything in your deck. So that's it's very, very consistent. That's why I also think Droll is pretty strong right now because if you draw a bunch of these and someone drills you, you're kind of dead. Now the equip spells. I play two living fossil, one autonomous, one phoenix, and one smoke grenade. Uh, these are the extra um, uh, is all targets I have you know, to send to the graveyard for um, to summon Oliver from grave from the deck. Uh, Divine Phoenix is pretty good. You can actually use this to uh, add this card back to your hand from the graveyard, and then use this to stack it uh, on top of your deck for play spreader, so you don't lose any card economy. And then again, and then at the end phase, you can send send it from the graveyard. I mean, from your deck to the graveyard with roll in effect. Uh, Living fossils are just a pseudo extenders, and they work really, really well with Ogier. Because uh, Ogier can send any fire worm uh, from your uh, deck to the graveyard, and then you can live, live in fossil it back. Uh, so you have like a, again another pseudo extender, which works out really well. Uh, autonomous action unit is just my going second card. Uh, you know, there's a lot of hand traps out there, and you know, for some reason they're all tuners. So if you uh, you you can use this, pay 1500 life points, summon a tuner from your opponent's graveyard, and then you can go into Hulk uh, pretty easily. Uh, this can be anything else you want though, but I had I had uh, the most success with this one because this deck really struggles going second in my opinion. So this actually helps you uh, push, you know, push for game or you know help you push um, your opponent or bait in the gates uh, because you special summon anything, you know, as long as it was uh, special summon properly. So if they have a monster that has like a negate, like if they had a prankatops on the graveyard, you summon it back, you have a pop. So most of the time, this baits on the gate under the right conditions. And then the, the last one, obviously, is Smoke Grenade. Uh, this is the card that everyone hates right now. Uh, because it, it is unfair, you know, let's just see your opponent's hand rip one card out of their hand. Uh, you can use it multiple times, not once per turn effect. Uh, so I don't see how this card is going to stay in the game much longer. But it's, it is, this is the reason why this deck is still so good. Because you can actually uh, see your opponent's hand. Which is a really unfair thing to do. So that's, that's how you can gauge when a deck is good or bad, is uh, if how unfair it is. So that's uh, that's it for all the spells. Oh, not not yet actually. Play two more spells: Call by the Grave and Horny Drones. Uh, play the one of you want to play the one of if you see it and you use it uh, and you chain it to a hand trap. Uh, most of the time, people just scoop because you drew the one of, and then you're gonna you're gonna go full combo. Uh, if you see it, great. If you don't, um, what can you do? But you just play it to one of the second one of. If you see it, great. Uh, and then you play uh, Hornet Drones. This is just another uh, Warrior Extender. So you can actually use Hornet Drones to go into Resolve. Uh, that's, all, that's all it's for. That's literally all it's for. Uh, you can get, this is my opinion, this is my extender, so I could go ahead and uh, you can cut this for something else, but I've seen success with this one. And then I only play one trap, which is the, the Phantom Knight's uh, Shea Brigadine. Uh, it is just a body to go into Resolve. That is it. Since I play no head, no traps in the main deck, this thing is always live. Uh, if you you know you can always just use it. Uh, you can always set it and use it to like block an attack, but that's really crappy. Uh, so you just want to use this just to go into resolve. Again, just uh, more extenders that are in, in the former spell and traps. Now for the extra deck, the extra deck's a little different, but uh, I think it's similar to most builds in my opinion. Uh, first, uh, two is old. This is the deck's bait, you know, like bread and butter. This is what you want to go into. The whole deck is built around just going to Azul as soon as possible. Uh, you can send as many equip cards, well, you know, it's up to the number of levels of the monster in your in your deck, a warrior monster, and then you can go ahead and throw some of it from your deck to the field. It also lets you add a monster from your deck to a warrior monster from your deck to your hand. And uh, but you cannot use that specific monster's name uh, for effects or, or summoning. So and it sets you up for next turn. Um, when you summon the first, when you summon it the first time and you add, most people don't do anything to it because uh, they know you're most people are playing the second one. 
uh, then you can you, know, you can set up yourself for next time. You can you can search a gear free or you can search a space connector or whatever you think would be best in case um, your opponent is able to break your board. Then I play the one link cross. Uh, link cross. You, everyone knows what this does. You can go ahead and uh, you know link it with uh, any link monster, and you can summon tokens up to the link rating. Uh, this is how you go into your synchro plays. Christian Hockey Five Axe. Uh, every deck in the world is playing this, except Dinos, I think, and maybe Dogmatica. But this 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 card does everything, honestly, for every deck. This card is broken. I can't believe they actually printed this card. Uh, but you need to play it, obviously. You're playing a synchro deck. You're gonna play this card. Uh, Mega Phantom Beast Aurora Dawn lets you summon three tokens that are level three. It also has three different effects. Uh, the only two that are really, well, the only one that's really relevant for this specific deck is the first one, where it lets you uh, tribute one monster and then go ahead and um, uh, pop one card in the field. Uh, so if you have access to Renard um, after you go full, after you go your full combo, you can actually special summon Renard before your end phase. Uh, add back smoke grenade, activate smoke grenade, attaching it to this one. Tribute the Renard and then pop the smoke grenade so you can pop so you can you know you can smoke grenade for two. Uh, sometimes it comes up, not always uh, for this specific deck. Again, look at my combo and uh, I might post another combo video next week or in a couple of days. Uh, but Aurora Down is definitely needed. And then um, for more utilities, I just go access code and unicorn. Uh, these two really go well together. You can go ahead and link up to Unicorn, spin one, and then you can link up to Access Code Talker, and then you can pop the entire field because most likely you'll have a bunch of different attributes in your grave, like uh, Aurora Dawn's Wind, uh, is all this light, Unicorn is dark. Uh, so you can have pop the whole field. It'll be This one will be 5,300, and most of the time you can go for game. Now for the Synchros. Uh, I play one Metal Marcher, one Captain Roland. The Roland, uh, it you know, it lets you add a, by, lets you send a spell, a equip spell from your deck to the graveyard, and lets you add a Warrior Monster at the end phase. And it's also a quick effect in the graveyard to equip itself to a Warrior Monster, making gain 500 attack. Uh, with Charles, lets you pop something on your opponent's field on their turn. Then I play one copy of. I don't even know how to say this one. Ignoble Lazond. I'm butchering these French names. Uh, there's a quick combo you can do between if you draw Renard and Ogier. It lets you search for Gear Freed and uh, before the fifth summon and summon it before you get you get imbued. And then you can go into um, Dissolve after that. Um, I'll show I'll make that combo video um, after this one. And uh, lets you go ahead. You know, it's a, it's another way. It's just another stepping ladder to get gear freed out as soon as possible. Uh, and then I play one Axel Synchron. Uh, the reason why I play this card is because it's just a stepping stone onto Charles. It's a level five, uh, so you can send uh, the Synchron tuner that's in my main deck to make it level six. And then with a three level three token, the Aurora then summons it's an easy Charles. Uh, this is the this is the one I'm playing because it's just an easier way and a less bricky way to summon it uh, instead of using power to drag it and playing more equip spells. But it's up to you guys what you guys want to do. Then one Borlo Savage Dragon. Uh, obviously, those are like the best synchro monster. It sets you up Omni Gates. It's big. Uh, it's level eight, so you're gonna go into this pretty often. And then uh, the main boss monster, which is. Charles. Uh, Charles is great in my opinion. It lets you basically pop one card every single turn. <clears throat> so it doesn't necessarily have to pop smoke grenade every single turn. You can pop your monster, your back row, I mean your opponent's back row. You, it, once you equip this card with Ogier and Oliver, it becomes untargetable and it becomes indestructible. So it's very hard to out. Um, but yeah, just this is this is a great uh, boss monster, honestly. So this is the one that you always want to go to the last part of your combo. This one, this is the one that lets uh, smoke grenade uh, see your. This is the yes, you use smoke grenade effect. And the last two parts of my extra deck are really just flex spots. Uh, they're Herald and Ents. Uh, Ents is just because of the Dogmaticas are everywhere. So if they use Maximus, you get a free pop. Heralds, and sometimes you can go into, not always. 
uh, but it's always good to have it because you have you do have uh, monsters uh, levels that correspond to a level four synchro. So sometimes you can actually go into Herald, but not always for this specific build. Now for my side deck, the side deck is pretty simple. I'll go through it pretty quick. Uh, back row removal, obviously, Cosmic Cyclone and One Hopper's Feather Duster. This is like the worst one I've ever seen before in my life. It's so it's such heavy played. But uh, yeah, you just back row hate. Uh, three, Lancia. Uh, there's a lot of dinos out there. Dragon Link sometimes hurts. Uh, so this actually helps. Uh, you know, they can't summon a living ear. They can't rip multiple cards out of your hand. So Lancia, I think, is definitely a good side deck right now. Uh, three Nibiru, if you're not playing, you know, if your deck can't play through Nibiru, then uh, you're not playing a good deck right now. <laughs> so if uh, this is just to like pretty much um, punish those players like Salmon Greats, you know, or any of those, any of those decks uh, that can't play through Nibiru. Uh, more back row hate. This is evenly matched. This could be Lightning Storm if you have it. I cannot afford Lightning Storm. This is my, uh, my cheap Lightning Storm, so evenly matched. Uh, everyone knows what this does. It's a equalizer. Uh, as you can see, most of the cards in my side deck are just uh, big hitting cards that would like even the playing field. And then uh, last but not least, uh, Dark Blue No More. Uh, this is situational right now, I think. Dark Ruler is not as strong as before because there's you know a lot of decks can see your hand and then rip one card out, including this deck. So. Dark Ruler is lost a lot of its power in my opinion, but it's still better to have it than not. Uh, you never know. Uh, sometimes you can use it. Someone preemptively summons a window on you, and then you can Dark Ruler them. Uh, if you're still, you know, if you're playing against, it's still, if, you're st if people are still playing or at Emancipator, you can go ahead and Dark Ruler your entire board. And that's it. I think that's my main deck. 43 in the main. Uh, and then 15 extra and obviously 15 side. Uh, you make changes as you see fit. I think this is the deck I had most success with. I've had a around a 60% uh, win rate at, in Dueling Book. And again, I got to like 500 rating or so uh, just playing this deck, which I know is not great, but uh, you know, I don't wanna play it too often. All right.